Greetings and welcome everyone to an episode of Headcanon. If you're new to my channel, this is a place where I take elements of a show and analyze it to uncover the deeper meaning. And in this case specifically, welcome to day one of Ruby Week, where I'll be releasing a theory video every day for the next five days, specifically about Ruby Volume 4. We're starting off with a big one. I bet there are a ton of people who are about ready to put my neck into a noose for getting all their hopes up, but let me clarify. Yes, Pyrrha did die, physically, but her soul, her aura, still persists. Let's go back to Remembrance. You believe in destiny. Yes. John. Did you hear the background? That was Pyrrha's fight with Cinder, something that Ruby wasn't present for. She's recalling things in her dream that she didn't see or hear. John! 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 This dream is strictly calling for him, and we see soon after that he is training with her in his thoughts. Pyrrha is using Ruby to channel her essence, her memories, her desires in a way to communicate with him. Her consciousness is still alive, it's just scattered. But how would this be possible in the first place? What could have saved her soul from being lost along with her body? Well, there are two potential explanations for this circumstance. One likely candidate is during her attempted merge with Fall Maiden, some of her aura's power was gained. However, I'm more in the camp of the second explanation, dating all the way back to Volume 1. For it is in passing that we achieve immortality. Through this, we become a paragon of virtue and glory to rise above all, infinite in distance and unbound by death. I release your soul, and by my shoulder protect thee. Notice Pyrrha's lines here? This sounds like an oath. Something a knight would swear to the loyalty of their king. We've seen that an aura can awaken people naturally. This is what happened to Ren when he was a boy, and likely to Yang around the same age without undergoing a ritual. The lines Pyrrha says are extremely odd too, for it is in passing we achieve immortality. Infinite in distance and unbound by death, I release your soul, and by my shoulder protect thee. This is an oath of protection, even through death. In a way, Pyrrha chose John all the way back then and as long as he needs protection, she will continue to exist. But why is it that Ruby is the one that's hearing her, and not John? Simply put, because she was nearby when she was killed. Be it from the power of the silver eyes, or just because she was a friend that called out her name at the end, Pyrrha's soul latched onto her. She's the carrier. However, she doesn't remain in possession of these all the time. Going back into Remembrance, we see these shining lights. Many have thought that these were fireflies, but they're not. When Ruby touched one, it split into smaller lights, and when Jean is swinging his sword, they don't swirl away like bugs in the wind. This is another mystical force, and they only lit up when Pyrrha was foremost in Jean's thoughts. Pyrrha's body may be destroyed, but her soul continues to live on, and is trying to communicate with Jean. At least that's my headcanon. I'm Dulcet Tone, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the bell icon next to it to be alerted for my future videos. If you want to see more videos like this, consider contributing to my Patreon. And a big thank you to all my current patrons for their continued support. And remember to always keep theorizing, you just might wind up right. Thanks for watching, and see you again tomorrow for Day 2 of Ruby Week.